Good morning and welcome. Good morning. I just couldn't help commenting on, on the surprise ending to the prelude. Um, announcements in the, along the saga of um, once more postponed general conference, which we thought was going to sort things out for the future of the Methodist Church, has been postponed one more year until 2024. Or, no, that's right, this is at 22, so two years. Um, and ostensibly because of COVID and difficulties of getting an international group together, um, it's been, been postponed. Um, and there are implications for the institution at large because of that, which will be discussed at more length. Um, I mean, it was just decided this last week, so it's all very, very new. Um, and Ad Council will be talking about that, among other things. Our meeting is on March 14th, 7 p.m. Um, next steps in terms of audio, installation and the vital church coaching that we're involved in now will be discussed as well. So please join me in the call to worship. <clears throat> o Lord, we have failed to bring you the first of all our blessings. We have been intoxicated by a hunger for power possessions, and protection. Guide us again through your word and your will and your way. Amen. Let's stand and join in singing, I Surrender All.
birthday cards that came to Paul on his birthday, his 74th birthday, because of the news of his being cancer-free. And she's feeling the power of prayer, which is great. Uh, we want to certainly remember the people of Ukraine and have two uh, other uh, prayer requests that have come in. Um, much to everyone's surprise, um, Angie Humberg, Superintendent Angie Humberg's father, father, husband, uh, died very unexpectedly. He's only 48, and so it's uh, no one really knows what exactly is going on except that, that he's gone. And this is a big part of our community, Big Walnut Superintendent Angie Humbert's family. Um, good news, uh, Calvin's hip replacement went well, but apparently in the process they found other things that need to be dealt with. So Calvin's an ongoing health concern. Um, and we're hoping for is offering traveling mercies to John uh, for his employment, for potential employment opportunities. Good morning. Good morning. Um, a, a couple of things. Um, the sound system, they're coming wave two this week when they're scheduled. They are trying to figure out if they can get us. The stuff we bought is still on a slow boat to somewhere at some point. Promise delivery is sometime within the next six, eight, 12 months or sometime thereafter. Right? And so our sound system folks are trying to figure out if there's an interim solution that can get us hooked up and actually start, you know, using some of the equipment that you see. So next Sunday, it may be more of the same or a new setup. And so either way, there's going to be bumps in the road. Amen? Amen. All right. So that's an update on that. The other part with the Ad Council, um, part of what the vital church uh, coaching is doing is kind of a new way of looking at ministry. And there's a, there's a fantastic game put out by Path One, which is the church planting wing of the United Methodist Church. And so part of what I'm thinking for at council is, yeah, we'll talk a little business, but the bulk of it is we may actually play a game together. So for some of you, that's a threat, and I know you'll stay home. And for others, hopefully that's an enticement to come. The more the merrier, the more that we kind of see what this, where this is going together. Fair? All right. And then as David said on the uh, General United Methodist Church Council, uh, the cancellation of that conference, what that means in practice is vague and undefined, which has been pretty much the status quo since 1968 when we formed as a denomination. Fair? Okay. So if there are any specific questions on any of those topics, feel free to connect with me afterwards. Um, but right now, let us go together and, and pray and lift up the request that we have heard together. Please join me in a posture of prayer. Loving God, we are grateful for this opportunity to gather, to be together to praise you. On this day, we will celebrate both the pain and suffering that is part of life, the hope and the joy that is part of life, and our purpose to stay focused on you. Lord, we rejoice with successful surgeries and recovery. We pray for those that have got new opportunities for employment. We lift up people who have lost loved ones, both here locally in our school leadership, overseas in Ukraine, and everywhere else throughout this world. Lord, we look around and we wonder what happened. We often look to you and ask why. 
Let this be a service that provides not an answer, but a glimpse, a sign of hope. Some guidance on where to put our eyes and our focus, where to look, and where to find you at work. It is this desire to find you, to see you, that we share together. And it is in that spirit of unity and seeking that we now say the words your Son Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we transition to the back half of the bulletin, I know you were all excited to see a four-part sermon. Uh, we're going to get a sermon series in the morning. I promise I will have you out of here by Tuesday. Fair? We have been walking through the Gospel of John, and Today's passage is the turning point. Everything has been building to today's message, and everything flows from. So I'm going to invite the children to come forward. We're going to do a lot of this together today. Now, when we started this series, I brought out my Bible comic book. Anybody remember this? All right. Now, back in the olden days of when we started this series, I think that was in the 1870s. I forget when we started the series. Um, so, so, this is the Gospel of John, and it's animated and stories. And so, what we've been through is in the beginning, right? It was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then we had some stories of Jesus doing things. And the people who saw it responded with, and they believed. And then we had a series of Jesus' interactions with the religious leaders and others. And that was a mixed response at best. Right? Remember last week we did the hats? Right? And some people with hats were all like, that's Becky. She can see. Others like, there's no way that's Becky. She can see. And there's another group that said, I have no idea what just happened. Remember that? So that's the, that's the response, the mixed response to Jesus that has been in the Gospel of John. So today, what do you think we're talking about? Can you read that? Raising Lazarus. You know who Lazarus is? No. A little bit? Lazarus? So this is a, the brother of Martha and Mary. All three of them are friends of Jesus. Okay? And so Lazarus gets sick. And that's where we're going to transition to Scripture itself. So that's on the screen. All right, we're going to read this together. A man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, uh, and her sister Martha. This was the same Mary who massaged the Lord's feet with aromatic oils and then wiped them with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was sick. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Master, the one you love so very much is sick. When Jesus got the message, he said, This sickness is not fatal. It will become an occasion to show God's glory by glorifying God's Son. Let me ask you, have any of you ever been sick? Yeah? Have you ever had a loved one who was really, really, really sick? Yeah? How did that make you feel? How was the sad? Did you feel a little bit helpless? Like you wanted to help them, but you didn't know how or couldn't? What was that? You were a baby, though? Okay. Mm-hmm. 
Have any of you have thought that maybe a loved one, a friend, a family member, grandma, grandpa might die? They were that sick? Right? That's what Mary, Martha are feeling about their brother Lazarus. He doesn't have the sniffles, right? He needs more than just a little cough medicine. This is serious. And they know it's serious, and they're hoping Jesus can help. But every one of us in here knows that it, it, things get serious, don't they? And we also know that there's a point at which we all die. Right? And so the next part of our service is we're gonna we're gonna celebrate something that's actually or commemorate something that happened last Wednesday. It's the annual thing we call it Ash Wednesday. Does anybody know what Ash Wednesday is for? Hmm? So Ash Wednesday is a service where we take ash. It's actually the palm leaves have been burned and they create an ash. In fact, they're right here in this bag. And so what we do is we take the ash and we will mark forehead or hand or however y'all want to receive the ashes. We'll come through and it's a reminder in both Jewish and Christian tradition, it's a reminder and a mark of our mortality that we all die, right? That's our remembrance. And so, do you all want to help me make the ashes that we're going to distribute today? Yeah. You like burning stuff? Well, that part's done. <laughs> that part's done. Now, you see that number? You see the number 500. That means that if we dump this whole bag of ash into the cup, we could have enough ashes for 500 people. Now, do you think we have more or less than 500 out there? Less. Do you think we need the whole bag? No. Okay. So what I'm going to do is we're going to set up a little chemistry shop right there. The other part, if you remember a few weeks ago, we did, we offered uh, healing with, an, with anointing oil. So what we do, if we apply the ash just by itself and then we wash it off, and let it sit there for a while and then wash it off, it can actually irritate the skin and leave a mark. So we're going to not do that to people. Good? Any objections? No, nope, we're all good. So what we do is we'll mix in a little of the oil, the anointing oil, and so when we put it on people's heads, or like I said, you have the option to do it on the head, you can stick out your hand, or if you prefer not, just cross your arms and I will just give the words, okay? So, you ready? All right. Now, you know the whole bag is for 500, so you tell me when to stop. That sound good? All right, here we go. Step number one. Oh, don't stop me too soon. It's stuck at the bottom of the bag. What do you think? What do you think? Good? More? A little bit more. Yep, more. Okay, we got some sense. That's up great. Okay. All right. All right. Oh, that'll get, oh, yes, we're going to not stop there. All right, perfect. I will seal up the bag. All right. Now, take a little bit of the oil. It's going to take a lot. A little bit. Put that there. Ready? Now we're going to mix it together. Make a paste. Get it nice and muddy. How's that? Oop, you okay? Jordan Rip, one down. Okay. Think that's good? Maybe a little bit more? No. Yeah. We'll give a little bit, another drop or two. Alright, this time we'll seal the bottle up. Turn it tight for me. Alright. Cool. Well, now you know where we're at, what we're going to do. Okay. So, what we do is we apply this to forehead on the arms. arms. You show me your palm and I will do that. And we'll just say, 
From dust you were made, and from dust you shall return. Now, do you remember the story in Genesis where God takes some dirt, right, and gathers it together, gets the dust together, and breathes life into us? That's what you use breath of life, humanity, right? So that's the remembrance. From dust we were made, and we're also reminded that we will die. Right? We go back to the earth, we're into the ground, so to dust we shall return. Okay? Who wants to go first? All right. Ready? All right. From dust you are made, dust you shall return. Who has that? From dust you are made, dust you shall return. From dust you are made, dust you shall return. From dust you are made, dust you shall return. Do you want any? No? That's cool. From dust you are made, dust you shall return. From dust you are made, dust you shall return. From dust you are made, dust you shall return. Do you want it? No? From dust you are made, dust you shall return. All right. I'll let you return to your seats. Now we're going to offer the adults an opportunity. This was spontaneous, and I forgot to mention Rachel. She has travel music. Great. If not, sit in reflective silence. No need to panic. No, you're all right. You're all right. We're good. From dust you are made, the dust you shall return. No more. We have the children come back up and continue our story on the next slide.
The moment Mary heard that, that Jesus was coming, she jumped up and ran out to him. Jesus had not entered the town, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When her sympathizing Jewish friends saw Mary run off, they followed her, thinking she came on her way to the tomb to weep there. Mary came to where Jesus was waiting and fell at his feet, saying, Master, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. Let me ask you this. We talked about when friends and family are sick or when they die. One of the responses that we often have is that we are angry. We're upset by the loss, right? And in those times of pain and suffering, one of the people we often get angry with is God. Right? Why didn't you do something? Why didn't you stop that? Right? Why did, what we have? We had a superintendent's spouse in the early 40s die suddenly. We have millions of people fleeing their homes in Ukraine. I don't know how many have died along the way. How could you allow this, God? Why didn't you do intervene? Right? It's a common response. And one of the beautiful things is, it comes from your heart, right? That sentiment, that understanding, that pain, that agony. And you know who you can share that with? With God. And with each other, right? Mary here was running out to be with Martha. She had friends, right? Her Jewish friends who were there comforting her. And Jesus. She had both anger directed towards Jesus and sought him for comfort. Both are brought together in Christ. And so with that, oh, why have I done that part? I skipped ahead. That's fine. So here's Jesus' response, right? So Mary comes out and says to Jesus, if you had been here, Lazarus would not have died. And here's Jesus' response. When Jesus saw Martha sobbing and the Jews with her sobbing, a deep anger welled within him. He said, where did you put him? Master, come and see, they said. And then Jesus wept. Jesus had the same emotions, the same response that Mary and Martha did to the death of their brother Lazarus. Right? There was an anger. There was a frustration. And he wept. Right? God shares in our pain. God shares in our suffering. God is present with us in those moments. And the greatest symbol that we have for that is communion. Right? Where we share in the body and the blood of Christ together in this commemoration. And so the choir is going to come up here in a minute, and they are going to remind us of that great ritual that we shared together. And when the choir completes, then I will come back and we'll take that together. Sound good? All right, I'll let you go back. See you soon.
I thought it was interesting as the choir began to sing that piece, my daughter Anne thought, that's odd, let us be bread. But the bread symbolizes the body of Christ. What's one of the ways that we describe the church? As the body of Christ. Right? We, this is an act of both remembrance of Jesus' body and his time, his physical presence here on earth, and a reminder that we are the body of Christ. And the blood is a reminder of the cup of salvation, the blood of the very essence of Jesus. It's all for who we are. And those things are brought together in communion. It's an act of remembering what was done, a reminder of who we are in the present and who we are called to be in the future. I'm going to go through the, the liturgy, the, the introduction here in a couple of minutes, but I'm going to ask, do I, have, do I have two volunteers to help me distribute the elements this morning? Yeah, Charlotte, someone else? One, two? I'll supervise, okay. So my hands still have plenty of ash on them. I'm not sure that's the one you want handling the cup. Fair, I'm not sure why fair is my, use, my, my go-to word this morning, but we're sticking with it. All right. So you step here, we'll, we'll do this together. Sound good? All right. That'd be great. Please join me in a posture of prayer. Loving God, it is with great humility and affection that we participate in this ritual, this ordinance of the church that you instituted on the night you were betrayed. On that night, Jesus gathered his closest friends, the disciples, with him for a meal. And as the meal began, he took the bread and he blessed it, giving thanks and saying, This is my body, broken for you. Take, eat, and as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. At the end of the meal, he took the cup, and into it he poured the wine. And again, he raised the cup and he blessed it, giving thanks and saying, This is my blood, the blood of a new covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Take, drink, and as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And so, loving God, we ask for your presence as our reminder that we are the body and the blood of Christ here on earth, as we remember that you gave your body and your blood for us and that you await for us in eternity in heaven. Lord, let us experience your presence and turn to you in fullness with open hearts and open minds in this, in this season of life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Step one and eight day. Right. Hold the tray, and then I've been asking people just to cup their hands, and you place it in their hand. That sound okay? Do you want to carry it in, or do you want me to carry it? And you give people the. You can do both. Fantastic. Yep. So just distribute.
Thanks, Dad. That's just the altar again. That's that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. Everybody ready to meet? All right. Bread of heaven and the cup of salvation, faith and mercy. Now they go to the tomb where Lazarus is. And Jesus asks them to roll the stone to the tomb away. And the immediate response of everyone watching is, this is going to be ugly. He's been in there four days. Right? This is not 20th century embalming techniques. Right? How many have ever had a mouse die in the house somewhere? All right, human remains four days later. You with me? All right, this is like some gruesome made for TV drama moment we're about to have. Jesus looked Martha in the eye. Didn't I tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? Then to the others, go ahead, take away the stone. They removed the stone. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and prayed. Father, I am grateful that you have listened to me. I know you always do listen. But on account of this crowd standing here, I have spoken so that, you, so that they might believe that you sent me. And out of the grave, still in his funeral linens, comes Lazarus. And if you thought there was a debate about Jesus after the blind person, you ain't seen nothing yet. And those that are opposed to Jesus and his message and this repetition of that he and the Father, he and God are one, that's what we're going to walk through for the rest of John. 
this season of Lent is that response of his disciples, of the temple leadership, of the people, those who have witnessed, those who have heard. All the way to the cross. All the way to Jesus' resurrection on Easter. And all because John wants you to believe. And so, this whole service has been designed to kind of walk through our mortality and suffering and to really emphasize each part and piece of this scripture. That we, we're not alone in our suffering. It's okay to be hurt. It's okay to share that hurt with God. God is not the cause of our suffering, but God meets us in our pain and suffering and promises hope and healing and resurrection. And so it was a spontaneous decision yesterday morning, which the band was willing to comply with, because the response should be, all the people said, Amen. Amen. And so we want to give you an opportunity to do that. I'm going to invite the band forward. They're going to come over here. All the children and youth, for sure, we have the words here. Come join. If you want to be an active participant in saying amen, there you go. There you go. I made 10 copies. If we need to share, we'll have to do that. You got it? We're going to invite you to stand and sing. The words will be on your screen. If you want to come forward. So, for those of you who have the sheet, read from the top left. Right? Those will be the words, and these will be the words. Right? Left, right, down, left, right, down. We'll make it. If you get lost, they'll be on the screen behind you. Got somebody on the clicker? All right. But all God's people say, Amen.
How do you feel? I'm looking at this. Everybody has a smile on their face. <laughs> Even though they're covered with masks, God bless you. <laughs> right? Everything points to our greatest hope. Everything points to Jesus. Everything points to Easter. And the proper response, all God's people said, Amen! Amen.